it's kind of a fundamental Wolfgang. I mean, it's a bit like me painting a picture and deciding myself whether it's a masterpiece. You know, at some point you've got to actually recognise that um, it's got to stand up to, to critique and scrutiny. Uh, I mean, one thing becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy when you get to a certain scale. Uh, and you know, I'm very proud we've got over 18 million users around the world of our technology. You build a, a larger pool of people that will provide that kind of um, correlational evidence, the anecdotal evidence that was referred to earlier, uh, the case studies and the feedback, and people that you work with on a long-term basis. Uh, and I'm very much of a view that when you work with schools, you enter a, a partnership. It's not a singular transaction, but you start a relationship. And as part of that, you provide that support, but you also capture that feedback. And that's what helps improve things. Um, but I think there's also a recognition and it comes with confidence, I guess, in what you do, that it's OK to say I don't have all the answers. And this that I've created was great then, but maybe it's not so great now. And you have to be bold enough to, to pivot when it's appropriate. So we use external parties to give us both the evidence, we hope, but also the steer. So we've done quite a bit of work with stakeholders like Education Alliance Finland, where our technology, the classroom instructional technology, is assessed by teachers um, within within their marketplace, and they provide against you know aligned against their their framework lots and lots of feedback, whether it's pedagogical, whether it's about ease of use and accessibility. You know, and, and there's a thing that I'm always quite passionate about, which is about having the strength to, to digitally disrupt. And that sounds a bit like, well, oh, that sounds a bit grand, Al. But, it, but in essence, you know, you create a product that meets a school's need, you hope. And over the years, you keep adding things with each new iteration. And maybe it's because schools have asked for it. Maybe it's because a competitor's done something else. And, and you reach a point where actually what you've got is a tool with a thousand features that originally 40 of them were asked for by schools. And you have to be bold enough to say, I'm going to draw a line here and I'm going to create something again that's fit for purpose for, for 2022 or 2023. And I'd argue one of the biggest lessons we've learned, I, I mentioned less is more in terms of technology adoption, but actually ease of use, technology being platform agnostic, being flexible because the landscape of devices is going to change, not having teachers having to get a, a PhD in how to use your product. There's so many other things that come around it. Um, that we absolutely use those external factors. And of course, you you make sure you bring good people. You know, Mark's one amongst many that we bring into the team that bring experience and ideas. And probably my final point, conscious of time, is we make a point as a vendor to be outward facing. We always have educators at our exhibitions, supporting us with magazines that we share for free, podcasts, radio shows, whatever it may be. Because all the time you're providing a platform for others, you're also providing a platform to learn from them. And I think that mindset really ripples through everything that I try and instill in the business.